Hello dear friends, welcome to the third professional year modules for ATCOM. We will begin with an introductory lecture to bioethics. Bioethics in healthcare. This lecture will include the following titles. Introduction to bioethics, theories of bioethics, ethical decision making, Tips for decision making, importance in healthcare education, examples of bioethical situations like human experimentation, organ transplant, genetic engineering, end of life care, reproductive technology, and followed by conclusion. Bioethics is a field that deals with ethical issues that arise in the context of medicine biology and biotechnology. The term bioethics was first coined in 1927 by a German lawyer and philosopher Fritz Saar. Bioethics is an important part of medical education because it helps students to develop the critical thinking and decision making skills they need to make ethical choices in clinical settings. In the 1970s, the first bioethical journal, the Hastings Center Report, was founded in 1971. The field of bioethics has since grown rapidly and there are now many bioethics centers and programs around the world. Bioethics is a multidisciplinary field drawing on the expertise of philosophers, lawyers, theologians, scientists and medical professionals. Bioethicists use a variety of ethical theories to analyze and resolve ethical issues in field of medicine and biology. So let us look into the most common theories used in bioethics. First is deontology theory. Deontology is a theory of ethics that emphasizes the importance of duty or obligation. Deontologists believe that there is a certain action that are right or wrong, regardless of their consequences. It means what is right is right, it doesn't regard what happens with the result of that decision. On the contrary, consequentialism is opposite, it focuses on the best outcome consequences. Consequentialism is a theory of ethics that emphasizes the importance of consequence. They believe the right action is the one that produces the best consequence. And the last is a virtue ethics theory. Virtue ethics is a theory of ethics that emphasizes on the importance of character. Virtue ethicists believe that the right action is the one that is consistent with the virtue, such as courage, honesty and compassion. Each ethical theory has its own strengths and weaknesses. The best ethical theory for a particular situation will depend on the specific situation. Now, making an ethical decision is not very easy. So, most commonly, whenever an ethical situation arises where we need to make a decision of a right or wrong uh, choice, that time, we need to take into consideration many aspects. Most of the aspects in the medical field are related to the medical knowledge of the uh, situation. But it all, we also need to take consideration regarding the ethical principles. So to uh, summarize the steps in uh, six precise steps, we, first we need to identify the ethical issue. The first step is to identify the ethical issue that needs to be addressed. This may be something that is obvious such as a decision whether or not to steal or it may be something that is more subtle such as decision to allocate the resources. Gathering information is the next step. Once the ethical issue has been identified, it is important to gather as much information as possible about the situation. This may involve talking to people who are involved, doing research or consulting with experts. Next is identifying the options. So once we have gathered the information, it is time to identify different options that are available to you. It is important to consider all the options, even the ones that may not initially you, you that you may not initially like. Weigh the pros and cons of each option. Once you have identified the option, it is time to weigh the pros and cons of each option. This involves considering the potential benefit and risk of each option, as well as impact on others. Then making a decision. Once you have weighed the pros and cons of each option, it is time to make a decision. It is important to make a decision that is consistent with your values and beliefs. Act on your decision. 
Once you have made a decision, it is important to act on it. This may involve taking a step to implement your decision or simply making a commitment to follow through on it. Additional tips for ethical decision making. Be open to different perspectives. It is important to be open to different perspectives when making ethical decisions. This means listening to view of others even if you disagree with them. Next is be honest with yourself and others. It is important to be honest with yourself and others when making ethical decisions. This means being truthful about your motivation and intention. Be willing to take responsibility of your decision. It is important to be willing to take responsibility of your decision. This means being prepared to live with the consequences of your choice. Ethical decision making is a lifelong journey. By following these tips, you can improve your ability to make ethical decisions in all areas of your life. What are the importance of this health of this uh, knowledge in healthcare education? See, you see, bioethic education may benefit have many benefits for medical students. This includes it helps them to develop a critical thinking and decision making skill. They need to make ethical choices in the clinical settings. It helps students understanding the ethical challenges that are inherent in practice of medicine. It helps students to develop the communication skill they need to discuss ethical issues with patients, families, and colleagues. It helps students to develop the respect for patients' autonomy and confidentiality. Now, let us see example of few situations which can be of ethical concern or which needs a, a you know a specific knowledge or a character to make a decision. First is human experimentation. The ethics of human experimentation is a complex and controversial topic. On one hand, it is important to conduct research on humans in order to develop new treatments, cures for diseases. On other hand, it is also important to protect the rights and welfare of human subjects. There are a number of ethical principles that should be considered when conducting human experimentation. We have already covered this uh, aspects in detail in our uh, second year modules. So here only I will be briefly brushing through. First is respect for autonomy. Human subjects have the right to make their own decision about whether or not to participate in research. They should be given all the information they need to make an informed decision and they should not be coerced or pressurized to participate. Second is beneficence. Research should be conducted in a way that minimizes the risk to harm the human subject. The potential benefit of the research should outweigh the risk. Next is non-maleficence. Research should cause not cause any harm to human subject. And last is justice. Research should be conducted in a way that it is fair and equitable. All potential subjects should have an equal opportunity to participate in the research regardless of their race, ethnicity, gender, socioeconomic status or other factors. But there are many uh, historical examples of unethical human experimentation. One of the most well-known example is the Tuskegee syphilis studies. This was conducted in the United States from 1932 to 1972. In this study, 400 African American men with syphilis were not given treatment of their disease, even after penicillin became available. The men were not told that they had syphilis and they were not given any information about the risk of being treated, not being treated. This study was a clear violation of ethical principles of respect of autonomy, beneficence and non-beneficence. Similarly, in the wake of Tusky study, there have been a number of reforms put in the place to protect the rights of human subjects. These reforms include establishment of institutional review boards, which are committees that review research proposals to ensure that they meet ethical standards. Institutional review boards must approve all research involving human subjects before it can begin. The ethics of human experimentation is a complex and evolving issues. As new technologies are developed, new ethical challenges will emerge. It is important to continue to discuss and debate these issues in order to ensure that human subjects are protected and their research is conducted in an ethical manner. Next example is organ transplant. The ethics of organ transplant is a complex and controversial topic. On one hand, organ transplantation can save lives and improve the quality of life for those who are waiting for a transplant. On the other hand, there are a number of ethical concerns that needs to be considered, such as the shortage of organs. There is a significant shortage of organs available for transplantation. In the United States, for example, there are over 1 lakh people waiting for life-saving organ transplant. So allocating these resources becomes an ethical question. The ethics of organ donation. Organ donation can be done from a living or a diseased donor. 
living donors must be healthy and willing to undergo the surgery to donate an organ the diseased donor must be brain dead or have a donor card on the side there are a number of ethical concerns about organ donation such as pressure that may be put on the families to donate organ of their loved ones <laughs> ethics of organ allocation when there are more people waiting for organ there are than the organ there are available decision must be made about who will receive the organ there may be a number of factors that is considered in organ allocation such as patient's medical condition their age their likelihood of survival the ethics of commercializing organ transplantation in some countries organs are bought and sold this practice is controversially and it raises concern about exploitation and commodification of human life the ethics of organ transplantation is a complex issue with no easy answer it is important to consider all ethical concerns involved before making a decision about organ donation and transplantation next topic is genetic engineering genetic engineering is the direct manipulation of one or more genes it is a powerful tool that has the potential to improve human health and well-being in many ways however it also raises a number of ethical concerns some of the potential benefits of genetic engineering include curing diseases genetic engineering could be used to cure diseases that are caused by genetic mutations for example it can be used to treat cystic fibrosis sickle cell anemia and tay sachs disease improving crop yield genetic engineering could be used to improve crop yield and make crops more resistant to pests and diseases this could help to reduce hunger and poverty creating new biofuels genetic engineering could be used to create new biofuels that are more efficient and environment friendly than traditional biofuels this could help to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels however there are also a number of ethical concerns about genetic engineering some of these concerns include the potential of unintended consequences genetic engineering is a complex process it is possible that we could create unintended consequences for example we could accidentally create new diseases or make existing diseases worse the potential of discrimination genetic engineering could be used to create designer babies who are genetically engineered to have certain traits this could lead to discrimination among people who do not have these traits the potential of misuse genetic engineering could be used to create weapons of mass destruction this is a serious concern and it is important to develop international treaties to prevent misuse of genetic engineering it is important to weigh the potential benefits and risk of genetic engineering before making decision about how to use this technology it is important to have public debate about the ethical implications of genetic engineering next is end of life care we have already discussed these aspects in the previous sessions so i will be briefly brushing through it involves a number of difficult and often emotionally charged decisions such as whether to continue life sustaining treatment whether to provide palliative care or whether to allow the patient to die naturally there are a number of ethical principles that should be considered when making decision about end of life care this includes respect of autonomy patient has the right to make his own decision about his care even though the decisions are not for the doctor or the family member moms beneficiaries doctor have a duty to do the best in interest of their patients this means providing the care that will benefit the patient and not cause them harm non maleficiaries doctor have a duty to do not harm the patients this means avoiding treatment that can likely cause harm than good just as the patient should have equal access to quality of life care quality of end of life care regardless of their race ethnicity economic status and other factors there is no one size fit all approach to end of life care the best approach will be depending upon the individual patient's wish and the circumstances it is important to have an open and honest conversation with the patient and their families about their wishes to end of life care these conversations should be held in advance of the patient's death so that there is time to make informed decisions and put the plans in place there are a number of resources available to help the patient and families make decision about end of life care these resources include advanced directive palliative care and hospice care advanced directives are the legal documents that allow patients to state their wishes for end of life care in the event that they are unable to make decisions for themselves there are a number of different type of advanced directives such as living will durable power of attorney for health care or do not resuscitate orders palliative care is a type of care that focuses on relieving pain and suffering in patients with serious illness palliative care can be provided at home or in hospital or in hospice setting hospice care is a type of palliative care that is specifically designed for patient who are in last stage of life hospice care provides patient with comfort and support it helps them to live their remaining days as 
fully as possible. Making decision about end of life care is a difficult and emotional process. However, it is important to have this conversation with patient and their family so that everyone can be prepared for end of life. Last is reproductive technology. Medical procedures and techniques have used have used to help people conceive and bear children. Some of the most common reproductive technology include IVF, in vitro fertilization. It is a procedure where eggs are removed from women's ovaries and fertilized with sperms in laboratories. These fertilized eggs are implanted in women's uterus. Surrogacy. Surrogacy is a procedure which, in which a woman carries and gives birth to a children to a child for another couple. Egg donation. Egg donation is a procedure in which a woman donates her eggs to another woman who is unable to conceive on their own. Sperm donation is the procedure in which a man donates his sperm to another couple who is unable to conceive their own. The most common ethical concerns about reproductive technology include the status of embryo. So some people believe that embryo are human beings from the moment of conception and that they should be treated with the same respect as any other human being. Others believe that the embryos are not human beings unless they are implanted in the uterus or unless they reach a certain stage of development. The use of donor gametes. Some people believe that it is wrong to use donor gametes such as exosperms because it involves the commodification of human being. Others believe that it is perfectly acceptable way to help others to, who are unable to conceive or bear child on their own. The use of reproductive technology for non-medical reason. Some people believe that reproductive technology should only be used for medical reason, such as when a couple is unable to conceive or bear child on their own, while others believe that reproductive technology can be used for non-medical non -medical reasons, such as when a couple wants a child of certain sex or when the single person wants to have a child. The ethics of reproductive technology is complex and controversial issue. There is no easy answer to question or whether or not to reproduce it or whether or not reproductive technology is ethical. It is important to weigh the potential benefits and risk of reproductive technology before making a decision about whether or not to use it. So in conclusion, I would like to tell that bioethics is an important field of study that has a place in medical and dental education. By incorporating bioethics in dental education, we can help to ensure that dentists are prepared to make ethical decisions in their practice and that they are aware of the ethical implications of their work. It helps the student to develop critical thinking, decision making skills. They need to make ethical choices in clinical settings. This is important because it ensures the patient receives the best possible care and their rights are protected. So this was a brief overview of bioethics. Uh, in, uh, if you have any further doubts or queries, you can contact me on the following numbers or email ID. Thank you very much. Have a great day.